All right, today we'll be talking about concavity in the second derivative test. Uh, now, concavity is just basically going to be, does my graph hold water or does it dump out water? Okay, so concave up would be this bad boy and concave down would be this bad boy. Okay, now, if we actually take a look, let's go to the graphs. Let's get rid of that one. There we go. Let's get rid of these. Okay, now if you notice, I can take a look at the graph and actually notice it and say, oh, it's concave up on a certain amount and everything. And where does it stop? Where, where does it stop being concave up? That's the only problem you're going to have. But it is concave down here and it's concave up here. Okay, so that one's pretty simple. Now, where we can notice that it's concave up is where the slope is negative but is increasing to a positive number and then it's increasing the slope is positive but increasing even more okay so you can do this thing called the the derivative test and you can look at the slopes along two consecutive numbers along an interval so we would probably look at zero here and one and just see if it's increasing and just see the slope we would just we would get the first derivative and check it out now if we were looking at this one, we would see the slope is positive, but it is decreasing as we go. And this side, it is positive, but decreasing. Okay, or sorry, it's this side, it's negative, but decreasing. So that's some hints that we're dealing with a concave down. Okay, now if we take a look at this one, and we go y equals uh, 6x uh, plus 2, Okay, we do have to be concerned if we actually do work with this. We do have to be concerned at a certain point, which is, uh, uh, sorry, x equals, let me see, we get 0, do, 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 uh, negative one third. So we should be concerned at x equals negative one third because that's when uh, our our uh, actual function turns into zero. So that's a point of interest for us right there. Okay. All right. So taking a look at this graphically. Okay. So numerically, you can actually look at the slope and stuff. And so what you can actually do is kind of look at this. This one is it's increasing increasing until it gets to right here which is negative one-third which is interesting because we just had this well if you look at the restriction here that's a huge thing okay so if we go to one-third negative one-third this is going to be the point where everything starts to concave Con go from concave down to concave up if you're going from left to right or concave go from concave up to concave down if you're going from right to left okay and so that that's what that little trick is is when you're working with this stuff okay All right but numerically uh, we would just see it we would say oh the slope is decreasing it's it's decreasing it's decreasing but it's slowing down we would say slowing down here and then all of a sudden it's increasing 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 quite a bit okay alright so that's some really cool things that you can look at too and if you notice okay if I cross this point up here with this point down here they actually match up quite a bit it's really cool to see how that the the, the line the relationship between the three graphs line up Okay, so that's graphically what you can look at and stuff. So this is going to be one third is the point where we stop being concave down and go to concave up or vice versa. Okay, now also you can do the second derivative test. And the second derivative test is just basically where you pay attention to the interval. Okay, all right, so let's go back to the drawing board and actually work with some stuff. So let's say we had f of x to be oops f of x is uh, 3x squared uh, minus x cubed okay so if I did my first derivative I get uh, 6x minus 3x squared 
Okay, so that's my first derivative. Great. That's that. That's how I find uh, the slope and stuff. So then I do double derivative or second derivative, and I get six minus six x. Okay. All right. And I also want to pay attention to when the double prime is happening. So f double prime of x is going to be zero when x equals one. Okay. All right. So that means that I'm going to be looking at the interval of negative infinity. Oops. Negative alt two three six infinity to one. And then I go from 1 to infinity. Okay, so I'm going to look at those intervals. Now, if, if I find, and this is the second derivative test, if I find that when I plug in numbers on this interval into the second derivative and I get a positive number, I'm going to be dealing with a concave, I believe it's concave up. Yeah, concave up. Yep, concave up, and then I'm going to be dealing with something else on concave down when it's decreasing. Okay, so let's test out, let me see, what's less than 1? I think 0 works. So we'll test out 0 first, and 0 into that function is going to be 6. Okay. All right, so that means it's concave up here. Oops, I hate it when you go to type A and you accidentally type uh, the uh, caps lock. Okay, now if we wanted to test the other one, we would just plug in. And why am I doing it this way? That's really interesting that I'm screwing this up. This shouldn't be the original function. This should be the double integral. Okay, there we go. So this one's going to be the double integral. And let's test 2 just because it's nice and close. Okay, so if I plug in 2 into it, I should get negative 6. Okay, and so if I get negative 6, this is going to be called concave down. Now back in the day, this was how you drew graphs, and this you had to use this information to figure out, okay, is this concave up, is this concave down, and you could actually draw a graph this way. But what also concave up and concave down is telling you is, concave up is telling you that the, uh, the slopes are increasing for, the, uh, for velocity. So that's an interesting thing to tell you. And this one is telling you the slopes are decreasing for velocity. Whether they're being positive or negative depends on where it's at, but you know, it's just it's just like that. Okay, so let's go to the graph and actually work with this. So it's what 3x squared minus x cubed. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Boom. Okay, so y equals 3x squared minus x cubed. Okay, so there's my actual function. Let's get into the picture. Okay, so if you notice, obviously it is increasing, so that matches my information. It looks like 1 is the magical point of where it stops being concave up. Uh, okay, let's do the first derivative. Uh, y equals uh, 6x minus 3x squared. Okay, and then let's do the second derivative, which is y equals uh, 6 minus 6x. Okay, and let's take a look at these two. Okay, now if you notice where they cross doesn't matter. That's, that, that's something else entirely. But where the second derivative crosses the x-axis is the point of inflection of where I change from concave up to concave down or vice versa. So that's a point of inflection right there. Okay, All right. Now, where my velocity touches the x-axis and where it moves on will actually tell you the local max, local mins. So that's kind of cool to know too. Okay, all right. Now, the top point 
of the um, the top point of my uh, first derivative will actually tell you where the point of inflection is as well. So that's kind of cool that you can actually find the point of inflection, the, the real masterful point, just by looking at the graph and just seeing it. Okay, and if you notice, this velocity is decreasing in its speed. Well, it's increasing, but it's slowly decreasing. It's, it's still going up. The slope is going up. So if you were to imagine a, a tangent line going this way, it's still going up. And then all of a sudden it starts going down. Okay, and that's where the concave down part comes into play. So a lot of cool things can come from just graphing this and taking a look at it and working with it because these graphs are just amazing to work with, okay? All right, uh, that is it for the second derivative test and just everything that we just need to know about this stuff. Uh, graphically, make sure you take a look at the points of inflection, uh, make sure you come up with complete sentences and just be careful about how you're working with this stuff, okay? All right, and just remember your points of inflection will not come at the local maxes or the local mins, but they'll come at like kind of the halfway point. Here, let me go back to the graph to show you. They'll come at kind of the halfway point of the actual graph, okay, of the actual slope between the top and bottom. So it's almost like if I were to think about this as like, uh, oh my gosh, Tiny Wings, that app and everything, you want to let go of the bird as he reaches the as he reaches the absolute point of inflection because then he'll fly off at the right point. If you don't, he'll slow down and stuff. So actually, Tiny Tiny Wings, uh, if you haven't played that app, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Tiny Wings actually uses this this uh, these these functions to actually point out you know the ideas behind hitting the point of inflection, doing all this and doing all that. I mean, it's really kind of cool. Uh, type stuff. I just thought of that. I didn't think of that till now and stuff. So really interesting. Okay. Well, I could stop bothering you with the interest, but that's how you do the second derivative test to find it out. You can also do it numerically and graphically. And uh, I highly recommend graphically, but you do need to know the other two ways. Okay. All right. Because the AP test, some questions you can do the calculator and some you can't. Okay. Have a great day. Talk to you later.